Carlos Puigdemont has been released on bail. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. A German court decided today to let Puigdemont walk free while a final decision on his extradition is made. In a major blow to Spain, the Schleswig Holstein court rejected the charges of rebellion due to lack of violence. The extradition process might go on, but solely on the grounds of misuse of public funds. A charge for which a German judge is also asking more information from Spain. Also today, Puigdemont was allowed to vote in the Catalan Parliament by proxy. It's the first time that he's been able to exercise his rights as MP since he was elected again in last December's election. We'll also bring you the latest on the negotiations to elect a new president, the political clash in Parliament and the extradition process for other pro-independence leaders. The decision announced this evening came as a major surprise. Carlos Puigdemont has been released on bail. The deposed president of Catalonia seeking refuge abroad since last October was detained in Germany two weeks ago following a European arrest warrant issued by Spain. The prosecutor in Germany requested his extradition for misuse of public funds as well as high treason, yet the German court of Schleswig holstein has decided to reject the latter. The equivalent in Spain, the crime of rebellion, can carry prison sentences of up to 30 years. The reason for the court's decision, Puigdemont was neither violent nor did he call for violence. The court set bail at 75,000 euros, therefore the pro-independence leader will be able to walk free for now, but he won't be able to leave the country and will have to report himself to police regularly. The final decision on this extradition could take several months. Catalonia has been without a government since October 27th when the Spanish government sacked Puigdemont and all his cabinet after they declared independence. Although pro-independence forces managed to win an overall majority in an election held in December, so far it has been impossible for them to form a new government. All candidates, including Puigdemont, have been vetoed by the Spanish judiciary because they're in jail or abroad, and difficulties amongst pro-independence groups also started to arise. Now a new name is on the table, although it might sound familiar. Jordi Sanchez, again. Pro-independence parties in Catalonia have agreed on trying once more to appoint the jailed activist as president. Last time, the Spanish judiciary blocked his election. Yet, this time could be different. The United Nations Human Rights Committee recently urged Spain to respect Sanchez's political rights. Pro-independence parties are not missing the opportunity. We want to the exceptional opportunity that el Comité dels Drets Humans de les Nacions Unides. Sí, de les Nacions Unides. Per això hem tornat a proposar Jordi Sánchez, per això tornarem a proposar Jordi Sánchez com a candidat a la presidència de la Generalitat de Catalunya. Other presidential candidates are backing the move from jail. For instance, Jordi Turull. Carles Puigdemont, the deposed president, also spoke out. Puigdemont called the UN ruling an unprecedented opportunity to defend the pro-independence cause at the international level. Puigdemont was able to cast a vote today in the Catalan Parliament for the first time. Spanish courts previously ruled that Puigdemont could not exercise his rights as an MP from abroad. But now he's reclaiming the same rights as other jailed MPs. The Parliament Bureau accepted his petition, but opposition parties are willing to challenge this decision. Nosotros ahora mismo estamos estudiando dos posibilidades. Una sería esperar si el gobierno de España toma la decisión de presentar un recurso en el Constitucional que paralizaría inmediatamente esa delegación. La otra es la posibilidad de que nosotros mismos presentemos un recurso de amparo. Es una posibilidad que estamos estudiando en función de cómo se vayan desarrollando los acontecimientos. As has become the norm, today's plenary session was anything but calm. With Puigdemont allowed to vote through a delegate for the first time, a new but familiar name back in the ring as presidential candidate, and the standstill continuing, pro-independence and unionist forces exchanged words in a debate led mainly by women. One of them, Ines Arrimadas, leader of Ciudadans in Catalonia, requested a debate through her party, one that never happened, with Parliament Speaker Roger Torrent about the presidential pre candidates presented so far. But the debate soon began became one about who is responsible for the political standstill. ¿Puede dar la cara el presidente del Parlament ante los catalanes para explicarnos qué ha pasado en Cataluña en estos meses y sobre todo qué va a pasar? A la hora de exigir responsabilitats, farien bé d'apuntar a qui veritablement les té i a qui fa que els candidats puguin o no puguin ser investits, puguin o no puguin ser aquí, puguin estar en llibertat o estar a la presó. Qui és que va convocar unes eleccions els resultats electorals de les quals no està disposat a respectar amb tota mena de subterfugis, com hem pogut veure, l'estat espanyol? I què hi trobem a l'oposició? Hi trobem grups parlamentaris més preocupats per la seva cursa cap a Moncloa, 
que per la situació d'absoluta fragilitat que viu el país. S'estan vulnerant lleis, s'està promovent un conflicte a Catalunya que ningú vol, però el que no podem fer és alimentar el conflicte. Haurem de contribuir a desescalar el conflicte. Doncs la preocupació no devia ser tanta quan en lloc de presentar-se i fer córrer el rellotge, vostès van decidir seure a un racó, mirar, protestar i no fer absolutament res de profit. Per tant, senyora Rimada, sisplau, demani al govern espanyol, demani al govern de l'estat espanyol al qual vostès donen suport, que doni la cara, que tingui el coratge i la valentia d'aparèixer en aquesta cambra per tal de donar comptes de l'aplicació del 155. Lo que les fastidia és que des del 155 los servicios públicos de Cataluña han funcionado con normalidad. Los funcionarios han seguido cobrando. Lo que les fastidia es que hemos sabido gobernar mejor Cataluña. While Carlos Puigdemont is in Germany waiting to learn what the judge decides on his extradition, another of his ministers is free on bail in Scotland waiting for another judge to decide from there. And today, three more members of the sacked Catalan government appeared before court in Brussels. The Belgian judge that interviewed ministers Donny Comín, Marichel Serret and Lluís Puig released them with precautionary measures while the process to decide on their extradition continues. Last year, the Belgian justice system took the same step but was not able to take a final decision on the case because Spain withdrew the European arrest warrant against them. This time the process might take its full course. Meanwhile, in Spanish courts, today we learn about the fate of the former police chief, Josep Luis Trapero. You might remember him because he was internationally praised for his handling of the August terrorist attacks, but now he's being prosecuted by the Spanish justice system. Trapero is being indicted for criminal organization and sedition for his role during the independence process and the October referendum. Three other police officials have also been sent to trial for similar charges. All of them are due to appear in court on April 16th and they might be put in pre-trial jail as sedition charges could imply up to 15 years behind bars. Spain denied today a link between the whistleblower Jervé Falciani's arrest yesterday and the extradition request of Catalan pro-independence leaders currently in Switzerland. The Spanish justice minister insisted the detention only came after a recent request by the Swiss authorities was made. But a spokesman for the Swiss government said that the international arrest warrant against Falciani was reissued in May 2017, not just a few weeks ago. Spain ruled in 2013 against extraditing him, so his new arrest came as a surprise to many. Pro-independence politicians have suggested Spain is using Falciani's case as leverage to influence Switzerland, where two Catalan leaders wanted by Madrid are currently staying. With so many politicians, activists and even police officers facing court in Spain, a campaign was launched today in Barcelona with a warning message. Tomorrow it could be you. That's what the promoters of this group are warning in order to raise awareness about the situation of persecution of ideas that, in their view, is currently happening in Spain. Clowns, Twitter users, hip-hop artists and even teachers are being sent to court for exercising their freedoms, according to the association. This is a campaign that is trying to remove awareness, to explain that we are very difficult and very hard situation una situació en la qual qualsevol persona pot ser víctima d'aquesta repressió, d'aquesta vulneració de drets que estem que estem patint. Let's move on now because these days Barcelona is hosting the biggest cruise ship in the world before it sets off on its first voyage around the Mediterranean. It's called the Symphony of the Seas and it has the capacity to hold almost 7,000 people. And like its predecessor, the Harmony of the Seas, this cruise ship has been installed with some new innovations. It has a botanical garden with 12,000 different species of plants, the tallest slide at sea, and many more new features, including aerial performances. The vessel is an Oasis-class cruise ship owned and operated by Royal Caribbean International. It will set sail on its maiden voyage this Saturday, heading to Italian and French ports before returning to Barcelona. Moving on again now. Ever heard of the game Mora? It's been around for millennia and is still popular today throughout many parts of the Mediterranean, including Catalonia. Mora is a game dating back thousands of years, all the way to ancient Greece and Rome. It became traditionally associated with sailors and pirates along the way, but over the years it has grown popular beyond port bars and taverns, as is the case in the southern coastal town of San Carlos de la Rapita, where the Morrapita Association keeps the pastime alive. As well as taking part in Morra competitions at home and away, the group is often invited to schools and colleges in order to spread the virtues of this age-old game. 
The rules are simple enough. A minimum of two players go head to head in a battle of wits. Each player must reveal their hands, holding out a certain number of fingers from zero to five. At the same time, they call out their guess of what the total number of fingers is. Whoever guesses correctly wins a point. For one member of Morapita, the game's simplicity is the key to its survival over millennia. Com a segut un joc de contar i i només has necessitat dos persones en les mans és pel fet de que este joc ha tingut tants danys ha mantingut pel Mediterrani i a tres llocs. Lo que et dona este joc la dicció que t'arriba a donar que desprèn és tan important com per a la gent que veu un partit de futbol o per a qui juga a un campionat de d'un d'un joc de videoconsola, però tens lo cara a cara contra les persones. Rafa Balaguer is such a fan that he has also co-authored a book on Morra alongside writer David González published last month. The title takes the name of the game with a hint of wordplay, Kina Morra, literally translates to what cheek. For the uninitiated, watching a game of Morra may seem like a more complex version of rock, paper, scissors, but its intricacies soon become known, making it a real spectacle that leaves no doubt as to how it has stood the test of time. That's all from us today, but one last thing before we go, let's take a look at the iconic mountain of Montserrat, probably one of the most visited places in the country after Barcelona. Hundreds of visitors head there every day to take in the monastery, artwork, surrounding nature and more. Check it out.